So I made a video called use Docker for your Golan projects with live reloading. It's a pretty straightforward video. I showcase some code where you basically take your Go application, put it in a Docker container and you use something like air for live reloading. Pretty simple. I was like, okay, this is gonna be a good video. And I got some positive feedback on it. People really liked it. However, one question that kept coming up and I actually got this from Reddit. This post was originally deleted, but it was a link to that video. I just showcased my video and it said, what's the reason for using Docker with Go. What am I missing? And there's a lot of comments here. There's a lot of comments of, you know, what are the benefits of using Go and what are the, you know, why you would want to use Docker with Go. And I figured there's a pretty good argument here and some people may still be kind of scratching their heads like, I don't really see the point. Why, why, you know, if Go just compiles to a binary and I could just deploy that, why do I need to Dockerize it? So I made this little advanced chart, Docker plus Go and a good and bad pros and cons kind of a uh, shindig here. So in my honest opinion, the downside, I guess, of using Docker and Go is basically for development unnecessary, not needed. And I think that's the main argument for that Reddit post, because in local development, if you're just doing stuff for yourself on your local machine, you're just having fun experimenting. Yeah, I mean, you probably don't need Docker. If I'm being honest, you could just spin up Go locally and have live reloading. You just integrate it with uh, Air or something else and you're good. You're fine. The reason why I advocate for Docker is because for a lot of times people get stuck in this local development kind of cycle, right? They get so accustomed to developing something on their machine, leveraging their ports, local hosting, et cetera, et cetera, that they forget that when you deploy something, there's a few more steps and considerations that you need to be aware of if you want to deploy your application so people can use them, whether it's a web app, whether it's something else, whether you're exposing API, whatever the case may be, Docker, I found has always been a good solution to a lot of these problems. And that's why I just recommend if you're going to develop even locally, even if you're far from developing something in production, you start with Docker because if you want to do it eventually, more likely than not, you are going to use something like Docker. So why don't you get it started from the get go? But let's go talk about some pros. So the main benefit of using Docker with Go is like the consistent environment. And what a consistent environment entails or includes is basically, you know, it reduces the it works on my machine argument, right? You consistently are able to replicate to an extent, right? There's some gotchas here. But if you are able to spin up a Docker container with a Go image and the dependencies are all within that container, you are able to basically take that Docker container, deploy it on your machine, your friend's machine, or a digital ocean droplet, a head snore droplet, whatever the case may be, and you will get a consistent environment, meaning your ports will be declared the same. Or if you have multiple front end and back end systems, they will be able to talk to each other if they're both containerized, Dockerized, and are able to communicate with one another. Another good one that I enjoy is dependency management. So dependency management, as explains, if your container, and this kind of goes with consistent environment, if I'm being honest, I could actually do something like this, and this would even make more sense. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Anytime you have dependencies on your application, if they are in the Docker image, you are able to, you know, include them confidently. So like libraries, binaries, whatever the case may be, Docker is able to provide you some assurance in that field. And then three more things I want to discuss would be isolation, scalability, and portability. So I'll start with portability here. Portability, as explained, if you have a Docker container, from what I have found, I've been able to move from a digital ocean hosted server or a, you know, a Hetzner server or any other insert yourself hosted provider very easily with Docker. Like if I have a Docker image with my app, I'm able to deploy it on whatever it could be, DO, Qualify, it doesn't matter. And the portability is there. So it really doesn't matter. An interesting point about scalability is horizontal scaling is easy because you can just add more containers, you know, add more containers. And, you know, this kind of starts to creep up on the field of Kubernetes with the scalability and isolation and how to handle different containers. But containerization leads to this branch of engineering where you are going to be asking yourself questions of load balance and scalability, et cetera, et cetera. And does it make sense to add more containers? Do you want to add more containers? You know, how do you facilitate load balancing and high availability? These are things that containers give you control to. And Kubernetes is a vessel or vehicle that allows you to have that level of granular control with different containers. So kind of two points there, but Docker is essentially what containerizes the application to give you those kind of blocks and to add or remove however you see fit using other tools. And the last one is isolation. So I think this is just pretty self-explanatory. Containers run isolated. 
right? And you can control that, right? Some containers can talk to each other. Containers can talk to each other or they can't, right? You can have sister containers that spin up. You can have parent containers or you can just have standoff containers. And this is good for many different reasons, primarily security, right? You can prevent conflict with other containers or other applications that are running inside containers. So isolation is honestly something I think a lot of people take for granted about when deploying their applications, but isolation, scalability, and portability are three points that always come to mind of why I dockerize my Go applications or any application for that matter. And I know, I know the argument is like, well, Go already, you know, it just creates and compiles to a binary. You can just use that. It's not that simple. You don't just write, you know, the bash command to execute the binary and you're good. There's a lot of things that go into it. The deeper you go and the more professional you want your software to be. Yeah, so one point I wanna add is microservice architecture. Basically, when you have like a microservice architecture, Docker is well suited for this style, for this design implementation. It allows, you know, different services to run its own container, manage your own dependencies, and to communicate with each other if that's something you wanna do. So a lot of microservices are, you know, use Docker and, you know, a lot of them communicate with each other through Docker containers. Now back to the bad, specifically for Go, like I said, for development not needed, you know, I, I'll say you can get away with just the compiled binary but it won't take you far. And a lot of people, I think, overreact to this following point, but it's the learning curve. I will say, like, it's not that bad. Majority of the time, and I showed this in this video, in the Golang and Docker project video, like Docker commands or Docker scripts, Docker files, I should say, aren't that bad. You only use a handful of commands, like declaring your working directory, copying and running commands, and then the final CMD uh, line in your Docker file. So honestly, I think that learning curve is blown out of proportion. But with all that being said, I really wanted to describe again, the power of Docker. And I know this says Docker plus go, and I really kind of focus on just Docker. But the main point is that I think eventually you will get to the point where you want to Dockerize your application. Yeah, you know, maybe in development, if you're not doing anything that requires users, it might be overkill. I just think it's a good practice just to put it in the Docker image. Like you, if it's your first time, you'll run into some gotchas of like how to declare, you know, the port or how do you get things to communicate or volumes and, and all that stuff. So I think it's just good practice to put it in a Docker image. And if you never use it, you never use it. But if you do, it's great. It's a something you can add on to your resume. And then the deeper you go, you know, I think the better you are going to be with more complicated tools like Kubernetes. But with all that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe if you're new. Appreciate it. Let's get to 50,000 subscribers. Love you guys. Peace.